Hello, everybody. It's me, Eli. I already had to shave about my hair off. And though, uh, we're in the middle of winter still. But I'm here to talk about a simple movie okay, that everybody's been talking to death already. I'm just looking at my face on the flat screen TV here. Those of you who are watching this right now. I'm going to take a break from video gameplay and talk about an interesting movie that it's already done to death already. A film that you basically can see the title of the video right now is Ghostbusters 2. Whether people love this movie or hate it, as a kid I enjoy the heck out of this one. Those of you who haven't looked at, well, basically Dorothy Martinez or Rick Martinez, the account I reviewed it most likely the Ghostbusters video games and the movie. I'm finally gonna review the sequel. Because we're basically gonna have another one pretty soon. The Afterlife one. Which everybody knows that's actually going to happen. There are all going to be CGI effects, but in a good way. But we're going to go back a long time ago in 1989 that most movie sequels have been around since, well, basically the 1950s or 40s. Is that most movie sequels can't be good or why they're bad at times. It's been a while since I had to talk about most sequel movies. They are actually good. Very good. I'm actually going to review like the older DVD of this movie here. This one is from 2005. What I'm holding right here is the old Ghostbusters. DVD. That's also what the collection of the first one. Since there's only like, well, basically two movies from the early 2000s, and then we get the third one, which is not counting the female Ghostbusters, because we all know that one wasn't the best one of the franchise series. But the video game that I played was on a PlayStation 2. It's also on PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, even on the Wii, PSP, and the DS. Or it's actually the true sequel to Ghostbusters. First video game that was in 2008. Eight of the franchise. A true third movie, well, video game of the franchise. That's actually pretty good. But we're all gonna go back to the early times that everybody won't stop talking about this movie. Even for the rest of time itself. Well, I think I dragged this video on long enough for... Really? Three minutes? Anyways, let's go ahead and talk about Ghostbusters 2. It takes place five years later. Where the main character, Dana Barrett... Finally has a child of her own, Oscar. Where everybody in New York City lives their normal lives. But unfortunately, when they got over for some... When that purple oozy green... <coughs> purple stuff. Of the baby carriage, carries the baby away. And Neri almost got hit by the bus. Where the Ghostbusters team, and that used the Ghost, <coughs> I'm not thinking straight right now. Bus, Ghost, that's nearly five years ago since 1984, toward 1989, are entertaining children, and then they don't appreciate it, so they're out of business. And they treat them like dirt now in this one. It's like people 
don't recognize them as Ghostbusters that they're being chased down by a bunch of random ghosts. Those and monsters. Giant Stay Pop Marshmallow Man. Hello. Even goes there to Garzarian. Heck, there's even the real Ghostbusters from the early 80s, and there were weird stuff happened back in that early time. Ungrateful little yuppie larva. After all we did for this city. Yeah. We conjured up a hundred foot marshmallow man, threw the top three floors off an uptown high rise, ended up getting sued by every state, county, and city agency in New York. See, even the movie is self aware about it. Anyways. He's dating a barrack. Now works at a museum. Um, of artwork. Or Eon Spangler. Is research into people's regular lines of marriage in normal time. And fascinating children. But not Hank. No, no. Do you ever see him? Occasionally. How is he these days? Peter? Well, he was borderline for a while. Then he crossed the border. Does he ever mention me? No. Well, we, we didn't part on very good terms. And then we sort of lost track of each other. After I got back. Fun fact. And Peter Bankman supposed to be the love interest to, well, Dana Barrett. And most likely the sequel, he's supposed to have a child of his own. But Dana Barrett chose a husband. He already has a... That doesn't show much in this movie whatsoever. or served no point. Good, send in the puppy, please. I thought of getting it. Now for Peter Finkman, he's doing his thing. Think about people's lines about thinking that and in the world will come. I'm um, sooner than they think. And she explains about the year 2016. And what just kind of close based on that female's movie. <laughs> Peter Venkman visited some old friends of his, including this guy. We got stiffed on the bill by some bureaucratic bookworm like yourself. Look, you stay away from the mayor. He's running for governor next month. Like this guy here. The new Walter Peck. Like you and your friends. You know, I'm a voter. Aren't you supposed to lie to me and kiss my butt? Still got some good humor in that. That's Yelnos. Believe it or not, he's my favorite character in this movie because he's an interesting, odd character who has a huge crush on Dana Barrett. I can sure she does her job being a great artist. Fun fact, this guy was also in Baby Genius as not a great star for him in the early 90s. I... But I find his character in this film a bit odd and interesting. And I paint him as alive. Science chicks really dig that large crane of yours, huh? I think they're more interested. 
interested in my epididymis. <laughs> Ray, let's close this place up so you can buy me a can calzone. Can oh, I really can't do that right now. And? But your book came in. Magical paths to fortune and power. Thank you. Now I gotta say, they did like different locations. Since these places, this movie does have like minor problems that they do repeat some of the scenes from the first movie. Which I don't mind at some point in time that most of these movie sequels do repeat their sounds just like in Home Alone 2. But they do different scenes. I also like the scene here where... Peter Venkman, aka Bill Murray, is having a great time in playing around of Oscar. Like, you feel like you want him to be the father instead of the husband that doesn't show much in this movie whatsoever. But I just find this scene very interestingly cute. So basically, the baby Oscar is already in his 40s now. There's actually twins. Fast forwarding it through this movie, Dana Barry explains that the big Harriet was carried away by that strange stuff on the ground and they had to investigate. This actually works. They're going on the ground to find the source on what's happening. While we cut to a scene where Janos was about to finish the painting of Lord Figo. Now I gotta admit seeing his bit special effects of his giant hip looks amazing. We well done. And see a bit of the slime in the background behind him. Looks stupendously well done. Just seeing the amazing Vigo. Is actually played by a different actor. Her voice. So yes, Vigo's voice is dubbed by someone else. I'm at the check Wikipedia again. So yeah, his goal is to control a child's body. So he can live again. But first he has to control Janos to pay Dana Barrett a visit. They find the liver of slime. Or... That. It has a pick up symbol and those creepy hands try to grab him and accidentally knock out the power. Arianos checks on Dana Barrett on how she and Oscar are doing. And he just has a look. And just mind his own business. This is gonna be a long movie. Anyhow, they end up in court, and we have our favorite actor returning, Rick Ramis. That's from the last Ghostbusters movie, stuff plays. Lewis. And another fun fact, the sequel acts like in the cartoon, especially Annie Potts character. Exhibits A through F on the table over here. Do you recognize this equipment? Yeah, that's the stuff the cops took from their truck. Do you know what this equipment is used for? I don't know. Hey, man. Catch a ghost, maybe? I don't Yep, their job was to catch ghosts. And they got a the simple cool. slime, which I'll find out what it does. 
and I like how he explains everything to the audience. Because you live here, when you live in a place and you love it like you do, you don't want nothing bad to happen. What? Because it, it, it'll never happen again. It's an isolated incident. It's a one-shot deal. Objection, Your Honor. What? He's leading the witness. Say. Alright, let's keep fast-forwarding this. He explains everything to him from the last movie that he was a dog. Oh, yada yada yada, we cut to the best part of this movie. That the slime him refers to someone getting too angry. And nearly like a half hour into the movie, we finally get to like the cut. Let's part of the movie, which I keep fast forwarding it. And then rewind in the back. Hold on. This Xbox One controller has a mind of its own. We finally get to the best part, the Scarity Brothers. Now I got me the special effects on these ghosts look stupendously awesome and yet scary all at once. Seeing these ghosts are really stupendous on how much budget this movie went to doing those giant puppet effects. Have an electricity looks like you can tell they did some hand drawn animation. The court is one of the best scenes of seeing the Ghostbusters trying to capture the Scarity Brothers. Let's say succeed catching them. The scene is stupendously Fabulously well done. So they finally are back in business. And we get a different rap song, which I actually like. I love this theme music. It's stupid. From Delicious. Also, I like the scene where this ghost was just doing this thing running and just catch him. Um, anyways. In random commercial. And another one of my favorite scenes is how they brought back Slimer. Who looks like his cartoon counterpart. Slimer's special effects looks really good on here. There's even a deleted scene that Lewis tries to catch him. And we won't see Slimer again until nearly to the climax of the movie. There's also this scene here where they examine the slime and pours it inside the toaster. And whatever they say gets angry, make the thing explode with emotionalness. Here it is. You guys do this at night when I'm not here? Oh, I get it, it sings. It sounds exactly like Jackie, that's fantastic. Just watch. Does it do any Lou Harris? Yep, foreshadowing that scene when you're in a movie. That'll be $9.99 for a dancing toaster. Anyhow, they go visit Dana Barrett where she works at. And we hear this classic 80s TV soundtrack music playing. I really love the scene in the film. It's very remarkably well done.
So they investigate the painting about Figo, a park tension destructor. <laughs> he never stops being funny. Anyhow, cut to the chase. Easily see her, her sucking out the tub. Oh, but it gets covered in that oozy slime and tries to get Oscar. And visit Peter Venkman's apartment to keep her and her baby safe. And they get a little bit of the backstory of Vigo, all the destructor that's been around for 106 years. That's lived the longest time but got teared apart. That's just pretty messed up. Ow. So, anyways, they really search on the painting of Vigo. But he uses hypnotic powers against. Ray, like yeah, like a mindless puppet. I work with better. Hmm. <laughs> I like that I'm scene where he says, "Angry, Shut angrier, and bad day." <laughs> Anyhow, let's fast forward here. So they check the pictures of Vigo. I'm being on an ordinary painting. Or sees a bit of slime in it. And that's no ordinary goat. <clears throat> painting. So what do you think? Chinese? How about Thai? Too spicy. So they actually figure out that whatever is slime behind them. Use ghostly powers and trap them in. And luckily, Ernie Hunton seems to arrive just the nick of time. So they have a choice to go down to ch abandoned ch railway station and investigate to find the liver of slime. Also, we get this scene. Hello? That is terrifying. You know, for kids. And Sean and play around the baby and we see freaky giant and decavitated heads. Enjoy your her nightmares, kids that are watching this. Anyhow there was a Ghost train that said the number one on the video, 100 people died. And now they find the lever of slime. A powerful slime pulls Ernie Hunston's character. And they go inside and go after him, where Peter Finkman is having a great time with Dana Barrett and the date. While Lewis and I'm just gonna say her name Annie Potts because that's obviously her real name on a date. I used to have a roommate, but my Which is kinda weird that that. that she used to have the love interest to Egon. Okay. I guess these two are made for each other since they both were 
<laughs> okay, let me hear that again. <laughs> it's kind of funny that he said Super Mario Brothers. Or it's because that's what they usually do in the 80s, play old NES games. <laughs> Which is a fun fact that what well, Ouija's matching also did some ghost busting. And in 2001 on the GameCube and do ghost busting as this movie came out. Which nearly took like Every 12 years, or is that what Luigi does? Some ghost busting. <laughs> Anyways, he's they got the sewers covering that, that slime all over them and control them as evil. And almost kill each other. And that they finally figure out it's at the museum. And try to explain everything to Peter Venkman. And then Dana Barrett. It is there. Security shows up and grab. Have them and send them to... A police station. Well Dana, we were just babysitting honest and, and we watched some TV and we had something to eat and then one thing led to another. And both of them were making out. I didn't know anything was going to happen, really. Hi, Dana. How was your day? Well, it wasn't a day. Vengeance is building up beneath the city. Psycho what? Psycho magnet theory. Negative human emotions are materializing in the form of a viscous... So they explain everything that there's going to be lots of... Negative emotional slime and whatever makes any people angrier, it'll explode more ghost. Also, the mayor thinks it's ridiculous. Most killing each other. This is I think they'll have a great have time. On the street lately? Do you know how weird it is out there? We've taken our own head count. There seem to be three million complete. So they went to listen to this Walter or Pig wanna be and we cut to Janos and Vigo. I'll explain the take over the world. I'll that he'll be a lot if to have Dana Barrett and the mother toward Vigo. I gotta admit that scene is also pretty awesome. And here's another scene that makes no sense. Where baby Oscar goes out the window and... Janos becomes a ghost for some reason. Yeah, I don't get it either, but it's pretty creepy. Where Dana Barrett is forced to go to the museum. And Lewis and Annie Potts have to find where the guys are at that are in prison. She find goes to the museum where it's all covered in slime and tries to get her baby back. And then Yano says insane. And but Vigo that wants to have a power to become young again. While that's happening, we get cool special effects of the ghost. Now I gotta admit, these scenes are friggin' awesome! Even for a coat of minks, inks come to life that they're covered in slime. And I love this song. On the city! Look at the effects on that ghost giant. It looks awesome. We stupendous. 
And there's even this scene here. I'm busy here. It's some dock supervisor down at Pier 34. What's the problem? He says the Titanic just arrived. Yep, there's Cheech Marin's cameo. Wow. This is a dark movie. Anyways, after all that, he throws that Walter Pigwan being tells him, gets him the Ghostbusters, and they're broken out of prison. And just repeat like the same scene for the first movie. So now we're, it's up to our heroes to stop the invasion of ghosts. They use their power strain to try to break down the slime. There was no use. And they actually used the giant statue of Rebony to cover it in slime. Just like I said, foreshadowing. Woo! Now I gotta admit, this is also the greatest part of the movie. Even though it repeats the same scene from the first film. And the coolest part is seeing and them using a Nintendo a joystick controller button. Alright, it's getting late. It's almost midnight. Let's go, Bankman. Now that is freaking sweet. And play that song higher. This film scene is stupendously fantastic. I think with that scene right there. The effects on that one still gets me every time. And this is where Lewis becomes a Ghostbuster. Well, basically in the video game, he does become playable. I'm not kidding, that actually happens. Now people cheer for the giant statue of rarity of the Ghostbusters. Hers. Let's charge it to... Museum. It's like almost... cheering for Godzilla, if he wasn't destroying the city. The effects still look a great freedom. That'll be out of our paychecks. Thanks in the next movie. Yeah, it takes place in Happy New Year's time. And there he is, Slimer. And for some reason, he's helping them. Anyways, let's cut to the final battle. They break in just in time to defeat Janos and Vigo. First, they slime him. Just knocking him out cold. And there'll be a million bucks. So they have to save Oscar. Her and Dana Barrett. Against Vigo. That's finally on the painting. But they were no match for him since he's too powerful. He was about to control... Oscar's body. He gets interrupted by Peter's ranting. Holy Carpathian would come back to life now and choose New York. Tasty pick. Bonehead. If you had brain He disagrees. And for some reason, Vigo's weakness is hearing people sing. Yeah, pretty stupid. Anyways, the less I question it, the more we can 
fast forward to the end of this movie. Luckily, we are broken free from Figo's power. Or he gets trapped inside the painting. And see that creepy effect. Transform his true... Those scene. Any mind control way. <laughs> eh, never liked them anyway. Well, that was easy. Even though the giant staple of Marshman was almost hard to handle at times. He's even Gozer. So Yolo is just back to his normal self. But they're saying the word. <laughs> right here. That's sweet. Hey fellas, you wanna take a look at this? And this is pretty much how the movie ends. Showing a perfectly good art sculpture of them in it. Early Renaissance, I think. Raphael or Piero della Francesca. No, I believe it's one of the Fettuccinis. It looks stupendously well done. And yet that's how the movie ends. It just ends right there. Whether you love this movie or hate it. That this film was actually one of my favorite sequels. Next to Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze, which I reviewed on Rex Martinez a long time ago. The cast members were still pretty great back then, in the 80s. Everybody already talked about this movie to death already. It's still funny. It's scary at most parts. The effects are still, and the work for it, remarkably well done back in the day. Give me, give it some credit. It does have some great looking ghost designs. The songs are great in this one, from classic 80s style. The acting is still pretty well done since 1984 to 1989. The locations were different in most parts. And somehow they brought back the Statue of Reality at the end. And what Jatry shows at the very end, I don't know how it worked, but I guess it's right there now. See? If you're like a huge Ghostbusters fan, you might actually enjoy watching this sequel. If not, then I am sorry that you have no childhood enjoying in classic 80s greatest scenes it's out there. It just comes to show that if you are going to do a sequel, I'll at least make it slightly different than the first one. Like, every sequel is always better than the first one or not. But who really doesn't like this sequel movie? I actually enjoyed this one a lot more as a kid. And because when they do like something from the early 80s and 90s, you feel like a kid again, just enjoying scenes like these. Or stupendi stu stupendously tastefully well done. So, yeah. All I can say is, I give this movie a solid salmon. No. 7.8 out of 10 of being a, a pretty good movie. It's, 
I actually really love this one um, as a kid. You know, I'm 29 years old, I still like it to this very day. Wonderful effects. Simple story, just take down an evil main ghost leader and restore New York City from a dreadful bit. From Ghost Invasion. And hear that awesome classic 80s soundtrack. Which hopefully I won't get copy right after me ending this video. If I do, oh well, that's life. But still, Ghostbusters 2 is one of my most favorite sequels that ever existed. Still more better than the first one. It's quite fun to watch. Watch if you have kids. It's, you'll probably keep them crying for a while, for like an hour and 40 minutes. So I have to take a long break after playing video games. Someday I'll play me the Ghostbusters Earth game that's remastered for the PS4 and Xbox One. They saw the 2008 game. So, if you really love sequels like these ones, you'll really enjoy watching the heck out of this one. This one also has animated episodes, which I will not show. All I can say is, if you really love Ghostbusters movies, you'll probably love both of these more better than that 2016 movie. So thank you all for watching. Have a sprandiculous day. Kalu Kale, baby. Thank you all for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And then I'll see you all... All in the next video. So... Farewell for now. <laughs> It'll be totally worth watching on DVD and Blu-ray. So goodbye for now.